Right, just a reminder, what we're going to do now, we're going to start with the vector equation of the plane and we're going to find the normal vector form and then end up with the Cartesian equation of this plane. Right, if we move the lambda like this and my value of mu as well, the point R will give me every point in the plane. So let's just put them back to where they were to begin with, which is both of them on one. Now, notice here we have an orange vector stuck out, and we can see that this is going to be 90 degrees to both this vector uh, AP, which was uh, U in my case, and also to the vector PR. If we look at it at a different angle, you can see it is at right angle. So it doesn't matter where I move R, wherever I move R, it will still be 90 degrees. It just changes in length at all, depending on the value of uh, of V and uh, U and V. Right, so if I can find this uh, normal vector, which I can do, because if I find the cross product of, of this vector here, with all the vector product, oops, gone a bit too far, that vector, and this vector, if I find that cross product, I will get a vector perpendicular to both of them and that will allow me to have a normal vector. And then if I know one particular point in the plane, which I do, when it's written in the vector equation, I can then find the normal vector form and then I can go on to find the Cartesian form. So if I click here, you'll get the vector equation. In a minute, I'm going to display this in a lot more detail. This is the uh, normal if I use that this vector here and this vector here, this is the value of the normal that I get. That can be greatly simplified. So I get a normal uh, normal vector equation where it's r dot minus twenty eight fifty six eighty four. I'm going to show you how to calculate this value, but and I can simplify it to get the equation that we did in the previous video. And then I can also get the Cartesian equation from that. Now, to do that, let's have a look. So here is some general point in the plane R. This is a known point. In this case, it's going to be minus 7, 1, 1. This is going to be mu times, uh, lambda times mu, uh, u. And this will be mu times v, where u is uh, this is parallel to this vector and v is parallel to this vector. Now this ve vector here, going across both of them, is going to be lambda u plus mu yeah, uh, lambda u plus mu times v. We have one more vector here which is coming out which we're going to call the normal vector. Now the vector equation of this line is going to be going from OR from O to R is the same as going O to A plus lambda AP, which is that one, plus mu PR. So using the, num the numbers in the question, it's going to be minus 7, 1, 1. And this is got by taking that point away from that point. So you get 8 minus 5, 6. Now the last one. I'm going to use 1, 2, minus 1, but if we notice in the applet, it was 4, 8, minus 4. And I'll just flip back so you can see that. You can see there, 4, 8, minus 4. But if you notice, 4, 8, minus 4 simplifies down to 4 times 1, 2, minus 1. It's best to use the most simplified form because it makes the arithmetic much easier. 
Now, the normal vector I can find by taking the cross product of this vector and this vector, because the cross product, the geometrical property of it, is to give me a vector perpendicular to the two vectors. So AP times PR, the vector product, so I'm going to do 8 minus 5, 6, the cross product of 8 minus 8 minus 5, 6, and 1, 2, minus 1. For the cross product, we set it out as I, J, K in two straight lines, and we'll write down 8 minus 5 and 6, and then underneath I'm going to write 1, 2, and minus 1. And remember, you cover up the first one, and you find the determinant of what's left. So it's going to be minus 5 times minus 1, minus 6 times 2, in brackets, lots of i, and I do this very carefully, yeah, because it's easy to make mistakes. Next one is always minus, and we cover up this one, so it's going to be 8 times minus 1, times 6 times 1, j. Covering up the last one, it's going to be 8 times 2, minus, minus 5 times 1, lots of k. This is going to give me 5 minus 12i, minus, minus 8, minus 6j, and plus 16 plus 5k. Now, you're strongly advised to write each step of the working out when doing the cross product. It's easy to make a mistake. 5 minus 12 gives me minus 7i. Minus 8 minus 6 gives me 14. So it's plus 14 when you take count that minus i in front. Plus 21k. Now, notice that also 7, 14, and 21 are all divisible by 7. So you should try to simplify it. So it's going to come down that n is going to be minus i plus 2j plus 3k. Then go back and now write it as a column vector. Minus 1, 2, and 3. It, if you use this one as well, it doesn't matter. Again, if you use this, it doesn't matter. Just the numbers come out much larger. You only need a vector which is perpendicular to the plane for the normal. And the simplest one is that. Right. So, going back to the same problem, we've got that n is minus 1, 2, 3, the normal vector. Now, the normal vector form is r dot n is equal to d, where r is equal to x, y, and z. Now, remember the previous video, how do we find the value of d? Well, what you do is you take the known point, which is minus 7, 1, 1, and substitute that for r. And then do dot times the normal, the dot product or the scalar product, minus 1, 2, 3. Working now, you're going to get minus 7 times minus 1, 1 times 2, and 1 times 3. So it's going to give you 7 plus 2 plus 3, which gives you 12. And that, so the vector normal form is going to be r dot minus 1, 2, 3 is equal to 12. And if you want to write that as a Cartesian thing, then remember that R stands for x, y, z, so just take a general form, x, y, z, minus 1, 2, 3, and you're going to end up with 12, it's equal to 12, sorry, you're going to end up with minus x, plus 2y, plus 3z, is equal to 12, which is x minus 2y minus 3z is equal to minus 12. Okay, so there we've gone from changing from the vector equation to the normal vector form and then the Cartesian equation explaining why you do each step.